Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys, trader and technical analyst for the last 13 years. We're going to check in on the markets today as the semiconductors led by NVDA led the NASDAQ a bit higher after a lower open, but we're going to be watching for the potential that daily lower highs are shaping up. The burden remains on bears. We're going to talk about sucker punches again and a whole lot of other stuff. Thanks for tuning in. So as you probably know, at this point, I'm not doing the daily videos anymore, but I'll still be hopping in every now and again and still certainly hanging out in the Chart Guys chat room, answering questions, posting setups and things like that. But looking at SPY and QQQ, so the way that I am viewing things, and I said this last week, is this to me is a sucker punch, this drop. Remember when we had the sucker punch on the hourly? The bears did not confirm an hourly downtrend and we saw continu continuation. This is the same thing for me, except instead of four or five hourly candles, it's four or five daily candles. It's a sucker punch. We did not confirm a downtrend. So the burden remains on bears. There's only two things that are going to happen. We're either going to break this low, confirm the daily downtrend for bears into further weekly consolidation, or we're not going to break that low, the sucker punch low, that key level, and it's a weekly bull flag going to all-time highs. Already, we have a 50% plus bounce retracement on the NASDAQ, which is a good sign for the bulls. S&P 500, even more than 50%. Double top with the high of yesterday. Well, we broke the high of yesterday, but only by 18 cents or so in SPY. So tomorrow's a big day where the bears have to show up tomorrow and set that daily lower high and try and head back to the recent low. And what I like about sucker punches is that line in the sand that it gives us. If you're looking at the hourly, last time we had it, you put your stop under that level, and you benefit with continuation. And now you can do that from a swing trading perspective. Your stop goes under that level. Could this be a head and shoulders? Absolutely, that's a possibility. But again, the bears have to show up and we have to see all sectors, all major sectors drop together because what's been going on is the NASDAQ and semiconductors are over here, XLF, XLV are over here, and they're just taking turns. The NASDAQ led the way down while it was doing so. Healthcare is hitting all time highs. XLF is hitting 52-week highs. They both pulled back yesterday when the NASDAQ got its first real bounce going. It's just tag team effort keeping bulls in control with healthy rotation. So hourly uptrends are short-term guide. We have to lose it for the daily lower high to be set. And then we watch for the potential of a tightening range. Because of the bounce of this retracement size, if we're going to drop to a lower low without tightening up first, it has to happen on high bear volume, and it likely has to happen with all major sectors, QQQ, XLF, XLV, all dropping together. Because again, anything else is healthy rotation. Semiconductors have been leading the way. Again, sucker punch on the daily, a drop five days in a row into a V-shaped bounce. 70, 80% bounce retracement, space for a daily higher low. If we do fail the all-time high and pull back, we're going to look for a tightening range because of that bounce retracement size. We know it's NVDA leading the way. Blue sky breakout definitely was a top watch over the past couple of weeks, knowing that we're just tightening up. The pressure is building. If we get over 505, we're likely going to see follow through after how many times we've rejected. And we had a very nice 9%, 8.5% move at this point. I was not at my computer yesterday morning, so unfortunately, I missed the entry on the resistance break, but congrats to the bulls that got it. And back burners, look at five minute on the morning. So on the drop on the morning, we know anything above the low of yesterday is an hourly higher low. We see a five minute stair step drop, and then that's it. That's low of the day, and we get very significant follow through from there. Into the end of the day, hourly consolidation started again. Anything above the low of today is an hourly higher low. We will have to lose the hourly uptrend for anything to shift from here. And when we do, We'll then look for hourly oversold to scout a daily higher low. So again, because it's in blue sky breakout, we know that back burners are on the menu. And we're, other names benefiting as well in the sector, SMCI. Big high volume breakout, highest level in many months. All-time highs back in play. ARM had a decent bounce, not quite as strong, did not participate today. But again, chip semiconductors, AMD is back to testing its high. They're definitely strong, and we know that NVDA is the bellwether for that sector, and that sector has a meaningful impact on the NASDAQ, so definitely worth paying attention to. My mindset is, you know, in short-term timeframes like today, watching today, if NVDA is at the all-time highs, the NASDAQ's not going to top out. 
And so the NASDAQ started hourly consolidation in the afternoon, but still very strong there on the hourly chart. Tesla relative weakness remains. We're dropping down and looking at 228.20, which is the lowest level in almost a couple of months. Tesla divided by QQQ is testing the weakest that it's been. It's approaching the weakest that it's been since in the last seven months. So we had this key level that needed to break for relative strength to start showing up. We failed and now we're back down testing the lows or approaching the lows, I should say. So relative weakness remains in Tesla. A lot of space. Actually, we already confirmed a little bear flag there. I'm going to be watching for Tesla to tighten up on the monthly chart. And actually, it was the two-week time frame. If the bulls are going to shift from relative weakness to relative strength, we have to see a two-week inverse head and shoulders, and earnings will be a factor in whether or not that shapes up. Healthcare, again, lead bull sector in 2024 so far. The two-month forever equilibrium that was sideways broke bull to all-time highs. And we've got new short-term support, 138.53 for full bull control. Little upper wick today, but again, just blue sky breakout. We've hit all-time highs five of the last six days. So healthcare has been leading the way up. Financial sector grinding, still holding daily EMA 12, still holding higher lows. Its resistance is all-time highs as well, but a bit further away. We got 38.61 in play before that. Watch the weekly stair steps. Both XLF and XLV are still weekly stair steps. And when they break, the bulls really want to see the NASDAQ showing strength because if these weekly stair steps break in XLF and XLV and the NASDAQ drops, that's the scenario where bears are going to be trying to confirm the daily downtrends in SPY and QQQ. So higher low every single week in the financial sector for two and a half months and same thing for XLV. IWM, weak bounce on the daily. So if everything, if SPY and the NASDAQ looked like IWM, I'd be much more open to this being a bear flag to confirm the daily downtrend into further weekly consolidation. The big difference lies in that bounce retracement. If we had bounced as much as the NASDAQ right now, IWM would be trading up around 200 and have a lot more space for the bulls to work with. So IWM, even just visually looking at it, we can see there's relative weakness in IWM because its daily bounce is nowhere near as strong as QQQ or SPY. So if I'm scouting bearish, I'm looking at the energy sector, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but I'm looking for names that are showing me, hey, we're a bit weaker, and IWM is one of those names. So we'll see if the bears can confirm that daily downtrend. If they do, our next target we're looking at is weekly EMA 12 down at 188, but bulls would need to see a move up towards 200. Otherwise, it's a potential daily bear flag. Pull up your FIB retracements and see that we're not getting over 382 retracement at this point. Biotech sector, very strong. We've got CES conference for the healthcare biotech sector. There's some buyouts going on. Look at daily EMA 12. Hold it, hold it. Didn't touch it, but held it, held it, held it, held it. Simple statement. If daily EMA 12 is support, the bulls have absolute complete control. The biotech sector is getting into a very key resistance range on the longer term here. We broke the downtrend resistance line already. And now we're just looking at the horizontal resistance zone. Essentially 92 to 97s. And we are in that zone right now. A little quick weekly bull flag confirmed. Identify, when you're doing technical analysis, identify patterns that keep happening to put probabilities in your favor. If something has happened four or five times every time it is shaped up, you can have more conviction giving it a try. It also tells you when that thing changes, something is different. So we'll know that when the biotech sector loses daily EMA 12 for the first time, we will be able to look at this chart and say, this is different for the first time in two months. Same thing with so many other names, Apple. What, what it stands out on this Apple chart to me? Well, I can look back and say, hmm, in the last four years, Apple has bounced from daily oversold conditions. It's been a good entry every time. One, two, three, just above it, four, five, six, seven. Look at two days ago. We're falling, we get right to daily oversold, V-shaped, well no, not a V-shaped bounce, a bounce, 
But let's say I enter 182, I sell half, 185. I can now put a stop loss under 180, that's either a longer term high or low, or I stop out and don't lose anything. Bulls are trying for a monthly high or low. Bulls are not liking how a potential monthly rising wedge is shaping up here. Reminds me a little bit of the energy sector, which we'll talk about again in just a moment. We'll keep an eye on that in 2024 here. But again, identify things on the chart that have played out historically time and time again, patterns, play the patterns as long as they're there. And then when the pattern stops working, we get information. Bitcoin might be doing something. Just seeing if there's news here. That looks like ETF news to me. I'm just looking at the crypto stocks after hours. That might be Bitcoin ETF news talking about tomorrow. I know there was speculation that the ETF would be approved tomorrow. Either way, that's a big candle. I guess on that note, we'll go to MARA. So MARA, I'm viewing this as a four hour equilibrium and we double talked with the high of yesterday and rejected by a couple pennies. And it's testing that level now. But I've been viewing this like this. And here we are knocking on the door of resistance. We got to break 2660, whatever, 2667 and 27 for a bull break to keep the daily uptrend going and to try and head back to recent highs. We had relative strength against Bitcoin. We hit a climax top on the 15% day. And now we have relative weakness against Bitcoin since then. But expecting the tightening ranges on the daily are going to break and give us another wave of volatility. And again, I'm still very actively day trading these names because that is where the volatility is. Today, the SEC grants approval for the Bitcoin ETFs. All right, it's official. I got to watch it here. I might, I might take profit if it turns into a sell the news. Pause. So that's what I expected. Sell the news. Exited. A bunch of crypto exited some MARA that I had left over from an earlier trade. And now we'll see where the dust settles. Well, that was wild. So apparently the SEC's Twitter was hacked and it's fake news. Regardless, uh, took profit in things that topped out fairly significantly. I have no idea how the dust is going to settle. At the moment, bulls are still fine in Bitcoin. I would need to see a break of 43,000 for things to start accelerating to the downside, but I wouldn't be surprised to find a range and tighten up for a bit. All right, wow, what a game. MSOS, daily consolidation underway. We had a five minute back burner. So back burner yesterday, five minute back burner on MSOS led to a nice 5% bounce. And then today, 15 minute, hit first oversold conditions and led to a little bit of a bounce, still weak, but I'm keeping an eye out for hourly oversold at this point. Once five minute oversold drops to a lower low, you know, it's a little bit of a red flag. That's not ideal back burner action. And so that then tells me, okay, daily consolidation is likely shaping up. Be patient for perhaps hourly oversold. Bulls must hold 710. That's a key level. But again, I'm not ruling out that in the absence of news, that we just trade within this range for a good bit of Q1 2024. But for now, bulls do still have the daily uptrend at this point. The dollar, keeping an eye out for a weekly lower high and keeping an eye out for a monthly higher low. Those are two opposite directions, but looking for signs whether one or the other is shaping up. And with the weekly bounce underway for the dollar, keeping an eye out for a possible lower high, but it's definitely been hurting the metals. Gold tightening range, that was the most likely scenario, and it is still in equilibrium at this point. Silver got right down to support and is trying to hold it, and the miners pulling back a bit more significantly. So if we break these weekly supports, I will be all out any metals and miners exposure. And so the dollar has to set that weekly lower high fairly soon if I'm gonna remain in these positions. Oil tightening up on the daily time frame. You can view this just as an equilibrium. 
I am looking bearish in the energy sector, as I've talked about many times. I have a, a starter position in ERY, which is the bear ETF. And again, I'm looking for a monthly rising wedge. I'm looking for four month stair step bear break. It's been years of that pattern. And I'm just looking for a pullback towards 70, but oil would have to break its weekly support if we're gonna follow through in a big way. So 64, 65 on oil is a key support level right now. And the bulls are attempting to tighten up, but definitely again, you know, out of all the major sectors I'm watching, energy is the weakest right now. So keeping an eye on that with a bit of a bear lean. And natural gas, very nice bounce, weekly stair step. We set a lower high every single week for months. That pattern breaks at 253 and we then get 30% of follow through. And if you're only the most aggressive bulls got that stair step, because if you look at the daily chart, this was a very weak bounce until this past five trading days, six trading days, when bulls started to accelerate a bit. But again, Google chart guys, stair step, because that is definitely, you know, this, this obviously worked out. I had no interest being aggressive, but Jungle Funk Joey, his best trade of 2022 or 2023 was the Tesla stair step. When things are extreme, stair steps are a good guide. NVDA this morning, five minute stair step. If you buy for the oversold bounce when the five minute lower high every candle pattern breaks, it's a great entry. Obviously it doesn't work every time, but it helps us pinpoint those entries a bit more. Hope you're well. We'll see how Bitcoin and the dust settles here and do good things. We'll end it here with a hike up a mountain and Chuck Guys member Miles showing off some skills with a little private concert. He and I were friends before the chart guys started.